What's up, everyone? It's Kanan. It's Jesse. We're the Geeky Sang Couple, and welcome to another Ruby video. And this was voted for by the people. Uh, did a poll. It was all Ruby videos, and of course, this one by a landslide. Everybody likes seeing me and Jess talk about Bumblebee. And uh, we've given theories before, but we've never really sat down and talked about what will exactly go down in Volume 9. So... We're going to get right into it. Don't want this to be a super long video because Monday's video took forever because of internet problems. So it went up today instead of Monday. So we're kind of doing back-to-back -back uploads here. And Jess just loves those. Um, as always, if you enjoy our content, please hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, click that like button, leave a comment. All that good stuff. We are uh, going on a roll here. We've been doing pretty well here recently, so, um, yeah. So, Bumblebee in Volume 9. So, we've made no secret that we kind of agree with most of the fandom that as of right now, Volume 9 is the perfect opportunity for Blake and Yang to kiss. Now, of course, Kruby could have other plans in store because, you know, it seems like we think the perfect moment is coming. But Kruby's like, nah, nah, we've got something later down the road. Because Kruby, I don't care what anyone says about <laughs> the writing of the show. Put it And to put it into, like, pro wrestling terms, Carrie and them are really good masters at long-term booking or long-term storytelling. They'll introduce something in an early volume, and then it may not wrap up until several volumes, a.k.a. several years down the road. And this is what makes Volume 9 such a special volume. This thing's been in the pressure cooker forever, because they've said this is something they came up with before Volume 1. So, um, this uh, this uh, bread's been in the oven for a long, long time. Um, so, and you know, Take what you will on, you know, Aaron saying she was the first Bumblebee shipper and she shipped Blake and Yang before the show ever aired and yet Volume 9's been in the plan. I don't know if there's a correlation there. It'd be funny if there was. If this comes out that, that this is why and all that, I will scream. <laughs> um, so I think what we should do, just in case, is we are going to rig our balloons I, I don't care if it's copying Cal and Hunter. I want I really want to put up with the mess and get a confetti cannon and fill it with black and yellow paper. Um, but there's not much in front of us, so it'll just come back into our faces. Um, but I want to look into getting one of those made. I really do. It's, it's going to be one of those occasions. It'll be worth cleaning up the mess. We'll probably be cleaning up confetti for years to come. Okay. So, I want to start, of course, with the most popular theory that the moment Blake and Yang reunite, they're going to run into each other's arms, probably crying, especially on Blake's part, and they're going to kiss. I personally do think Blake will be the one to initiate it, but that is because of what happened at the end of Volume 8. Of course, we've talked about before. Yang fell, and in the Volume 8 commentary, Eddie let a few things slip. Well, not slip, but he, he gave us some info. Now, this is not going to be verbatim, because it's been pff, a while since I listened to the commentary of Volume 8, but um, apparently there was a lot of back and forth on who was going to be the first to fall. Um, you know, I could see it now. Oh, Ruby should be the first. Blake should be the first. Weiss should be the first. Well, Eddie said the reason why they chose Yang was because, for one, they felt like Volume 8, in some ways, was a Yang volume because of, you know, them splitting up. And <laughs> let's face it, they did focus a little bit more on Yang's side than they did Ruby's side in a lot of ways. Um, and they felt like, you know, her being the first was kind of a good send-off for her as far as her story in Volume 8 goes. Um, but he also stated that he kind of confirmed the whole fan theory that Yang is the heart, kind of, of the team. Um, 
and that she would, in a lot of ways, have the biggest reaction, being the first one to fall. Um, he mentioned, of course, her and Ruby are sisters, so there's that. He also said, and her and Blake have this very close personal relationship, so there's a reaction to that. He didn't really mention anything for why, so as also a freezer burn shipper, that was kind of sad. But, um, so... They picked Yang for a reason, and one being her being sisters with Ruby, and also her relationship with Blake. Now, of course, Blake had a way <laughs> bigger reaction than Ruby. Now, the defense to that is Ruby was more than likely in shock. Like, she literally, for the, those split seconds, did not know what was going on. And really, a lot of people react to stuff like this in different ways. Some react the way Blake did, and some react the way Ru Ruby did. You're such in shock that you don't have much of a reaction. Um, I like I was that way when my dad passed. I just laid there in my bed, just in shock. Like I, when my mom passed, I had Blake's reaction. Yeah, like, she. I was the. <laughs> complete opposite so it's like <laughs> yeah people react to stuff like that in way different ways Jess was way more emotional I just I was frozen for a good for a little bit um, of course I did react later um, but yeah people react to stuff like that in different ways now of course Erin teased for a while that she had to scream during her voice work and I remember you and me went through different theories, you know, is it what a, it could be. is it, yeah, is it a battle cry? Does Blake get hurt? Could it possibly be Yang? And it turned out to be. And of course, you know, Blake screams Yang's name. Tears are rolling down her eyes as she screams. We do see her cry. She is literally reaching, still reaching for Yang. Weiss has to pull her back over. Um, it was a very dramatic, but very, like, you can tell they did that for a reason. <laughs> and that leads to Volume 9. To me, and, and to you and to a lot of people, they wouldn't have had Blake react that way if they didn't already have the reunion planned. For a while there, between, I'm sure, Yang falling and Blake falling herself and waking up on the island, she thought Yang was dead. There was fans who thought Yang was dead. It's like, oh, I guess the, I guess the name of the show is going to be Rube from now on. Um, of course, we knew that Yang wasn't dead because, for one, Team Ruby has plot armor. They can get hurt, but they're not exactly going to die. Like, I think the only time... Team Ruby could have any possibility of dying is the final battle because all bets are off at that point. <laughs> I mean, come on, they killed off Iron Man and the Avengers, so I mean, the final battles come. I don't think that's going to happen because, for one, the title Avengers is very broad. There's a lot of Avengers. Ruby is is Ruby. Team Ruby, <laughs> yeah, is Ruby Weiss Blake Yang. So nine times out of ten, if the show is named after or the or is the initials of certain characters more than likely they're not going to be killed off. Um I've always said it's like if they killed Cora off in the Legend of Cora, it would be tonight on the Legend of blank, you know. So um that's not a very good explanation, but it's yeah. still the same point. Yeah. Though. Like you just it's just not something that like. Yeah. And so, of course, in the trailer for Volume 9, we did not get much as far as any interaction between Blake and Yang. But we do know that Team Ruby will definitely reunite at some point in Volume 9. Like, I want them to, like, as soon as possible. But there's another part of me is like, let's see some episodes of just, like, each one of them going through something before they reunite. But they showed them together so many times in the trailer. I kind of have a feeling it's going to happen maybe within the first couple of episodes. Who knows? We still don't know much about Neo's fate or Jean's fate. Uh, as Like, you know, the trailer gave us some little tidbits, but, you know, who knows? And, like, 
this is so Alice in Wonderland through the looking glass, like big time that we don't know half of what the stuff in that trailer means. Yeah. Like we can speculate, but I'm all for not for just waiting and going for the ride instead of trying to guess because it's going to be one of those volumes. Now, then you start thinking other ways. Are they alone? Does Ruby and Weiss see it? There's some already theorizing that Little might have something to do with it. You know, asking Ruby, do those two know that they look at each other? Like, you know, that, you know, they look at each other a whole lot, you know, and stuff like that. That would be cute. It'd be really adorable if Little has uh, any say in it. But, you know, all we really saw uh, that was noteworthy was, you know, they showed Yang and it looked like I, I have not looked at it again. I've tried, I'm going to try and go into volume nine not really thinking much on the trailer because trailer magic and them putting certain scenes together and making it look this way when it could look this way. And we've seen scenes in trailers from Ruby before that were completely cut out. Yeah. So who knows? But it looked like there was like, she was in like a cloudy area, like there was clouds behind clouds her. Clouds or something that shaped similar. So but I it, mean... yeah, it was a really, really like gloomy, dimly lit area, but she was smiling. So, we don't know what she is seeing at that point. Is she is she seeing Blake for the first time since, you know, they've been on the island? Um, is she seeing Summer? Will we get the theory of them seeing spirits of the dead while they're there? Because um, I think that would fit really well, especially with characters like Neo, who could see Roman, and we'd get to see Pyrrha again, hopefully. But, I mean... There's not much to say. And then, of course, we saw Blake, you know, coming through these vines that kind of look like bananas in a way. But the rest of Team Ruby is behind her. They've made like a little camp. Um, so they didn't really show much that we could go off of. We could speculate all day. Um, now, is there a chance they won't kiss when they reunite? Now... I don't think that's really believable at this point. Like, it's definitely going to, like, it's going to have to top the reunion in Volume 8, which was already really romantic and, like, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, intimate. They're going to have to top that. And really, if you ask me, the whole putting their heads together and the moment they shared in Volume 8... I've said since we saw the episode, I think was way more powerful than a kiss. So they're going to have to really, like, push the limit here on what they show. And, of course, Carrie and many other members of Kruby have said that Volume 8 has some of the most heartfelt, touching, and emotional moments in the entire series What's what could possibly be something that is so emotional that the fandom has been waiting on it for so long that would literally, I guarantee Jess will cry. Eight, I'll probably, yeah. Well, you said eight. <laughs> well, well, I'm. You know what I mean. It like, it would, like the moments from that would be greater than all yeah, those things. That yeah. Was, so, yeah. And like, like Jess will more than like she almost <laughs> cried during the reunion in Volume Eight. I will more than likely cry because I've been shipping this since forever. forever. So, like it, like there will be reaction compilations everywhere for this. I predict Ruby Twitter will crash when Blake and Yang kiss. Um, is it like I said? Like since we really don't know, like especially since the trailer, we don't know what where what is placed where. Like we don't know for like their reunion if we would get the kiss, like if it's that early on or like so it's. And like, I mean, part I'd like of to me... think that 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 reunion would be a perfect moment, but what if there is something bigger of a realization between, but of something for them, and it causes something later that's the, even greater. Because the trailer clip does say they will struggle with their identities. Now, that could mean something completely different. It could mean something about their identities as huntresses, as people. I mean, it may not have anything to do with Blake and Yang's relationship, but it could in some way. Because, like, I don't know. Like, I think it has to do with each of them individually, like, personally. Yes. Yeah. Which would still tie into them, but not, like, 
everything. Yeah. Cause now, like, if if Nora and Ren fell, yeah, then that would be a little they're, bit because they're because they're in the middle of something like that already. Yes. So and Blake and Wang, <laughs> they they've already went through their moments. Yeah, of they, things they, like that. They so, kind of already know how they feel about each other because. If Yang was did, did not have some kind of romantic interest in Blake, for one, we never would have gotten the whole "what if I needed her here for me" moment. We never would have gotten um, all that matters, the we song, the reunion. We well, wouldn't yeah, have gotten that either. Well, yeah, <laughs> like, but it wouldn't like, have been as intimate. But also, you know, the whole thing in Volume Eight, you know, Yang being scared that Blake would think less of her for yeah. not helping Mantle. The fact that she was looking at something that was the color purple when she said it. Um, the fact that Yang blushed. I don't think we've ever seen Yang blush in the series before. And Yang originally was a kind of more flirty character until she went through her character development change. It's made her more of a serious and more... I, she's not really brooding any... Well, she kind of still is in a lot of ways. Not like, like she was. Though. No. But she's more of a serious character now because they're growing up as the series goes on. And Monty always said, they're kids, you know. They're, they're going to grow. They're yes. going to change. So, um, I mean... And so that that's why I like where the direction is going. Ruby's coming, becoming a more stable leader. Weiss has went through some of the biggest character changes ever to the point where people are shocked about how she is an ice queendom, even though we've not watched it. It still covers some parts of Volume 1 where she was, she was not the... Not the best person. People have gotten so used to how Weiss is now that some it's have a huge like huge shock to the system when you yeah. see some, when you go back and see something like that. Yeah, you know? and then of course Blake. As of Volume Eight, she kind of started turning back into who she was before Adam. Yang has it, Yang still has her moments where she is who she was. She still tells puns. She still likes to have fun. You know, when they found the bikes in Volume Eight, she had her old Yang moment. Um, but she's more of a serious character now from what she's went through. And that happens to characters. They, a character cannot remain who they originally were at the beginning of a story to the very end. It, it's called character development. It, it has to happen. Um, there's been many, like, you know, Luke at the beginning of the Star Wars trilogy was not the same person he was by Return of the Jedi. Um, for video game nerds, Tales of the Abyss... Another character called Luke, one of the like one of the most non-likable characters ever in the beginning of the game. Bratty, snooty, just did not like him. But by the end of it, after he's went through his character development, he is one of the more likable characters in a Tales game. You like you better be glad you never watched me play Tales of the Abyss. You would have hated him. But you know. His development was marked by cutting off hair. He had very long hair at the beginning of the game. When he goes through his change, he cuts it short. That's why cutting of the hair was such a big deal. When we saw Blake uh, was going to have short hair in Volume 7, like, oh, you know, she's having a Cora moment, you know, and Aaron touched on that too. Um, she also said, you know, hey, you know what, what else happened after Cora cut her hair? Um, I love Aaron so much. She, she always throws in stuff like that. <laughs> So like I I under I get where you're going with I and I completely agree they could do something like that, but man after how volume eight ended yeah, and just how it would still be the perfect that's what I'm saying for me thinking it's either gonna happen in that reunion, or there's something greater a little later on that's going to be that moment. I don't think they're gonna wait that far yeah, in though because like because how would you react if. If you thought I was dead. Had... I mean, that's the natural reaction, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like, so I don't I think, just... like, because I think Renora's, the Renora kiss was pretty far into the season, wasn't it? It was like, oh, gosh, you're going to make, I've not watched Volume 7 all the way through in so long. It was like episode 6, maybe, so, I think. I mean, so it was a decent way. Chapter in. 6. I don't think this one would be follow that because of the well they want to make it different they don't want to just yeah, that's copy what I'm, that's what the i'm Renora saying kiss. i don't think it's going to be like that but i the reunion is the best option and that's where my first thoughts are going to go and unless I, I see something to prove me otherwise it's and, that and then if not that it's something greater and you know 
even though the the song has become has has been called non-canon for so long, this island is the perfect setting for the garden setting from from the song Bumble. Uh, and I mean, we've already seen the landscape of the island that like I really things giant. <laughs> well, that but there Colorful. was a there was a rainbow I think in the in the thing. Also, we've got the theory that the island. Uh, Reacts to emotions. Reacts to emotions. Like, I still do... Like, even though we've only got that one scene to go off of, I do not think they would have had Ruby starting to cry and a, and it starting... Raining. Yeah, right so, when it happened. So, I want to see just a kaleidoscope of colors happening when Blake and Yang kiss. I want it like Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds um, going on here. Just like complete rad mid-60s psychedelic... It's like a delicate stuff going on here. <laughs> um, and if they bring back Bumble to play during it, I, I would That'd not. Be even better. <laughs> yeah. Or a new song maybe with Aaron singing and maybe Casey singing as Yang or who knows. Um, I do know Barbara can sing as well, but I, she's not, she just doesn't do it a whole lot. Um, and of course, Aaron did recently announce that she was going to music school. Yeah. So... I don't know if it's anything like that, but I think she's trying, she's finding other career opportunities besides just voice acting, which is always good. Um, you always want to develop a craft of some kind. I wished I had, I wished I could paint or do carpentry or something, because if you can develop a skill like that, you literally never run out of work. Um, that's why she does so much good in, in being a seamstress and all that. Um, Because she learned to craft. I sadly never really did because I was a lazy kid. (laughs) Um, I mean, if that's the truth, that's, you know, I I just wanted to sit in the house and watch anime and play video games. Um, I'm surprised I uh, work as hard as I do now. But um, not much of a theory video in that there's not much else we can think of right now. Maybe when Volume 9 actually starts and we see where it's going, we can start picking things together. I will admit, though, if they don't kiss when they re- reunite and it's not, and it's just, it's put to the, like, it's just made not a big deal, I will be a bit critical there because that's I not realistic. Will, that's, that's not realistic after what they did at the end of Volume 8. With her reaction, it wouldn't be realistic, and I think a lot of the fandom would be pissed. I mean, like... There's gotta be something. There has to be something, and it has to, like... That's what I'm saying. If it is not the kiss at that point, then obviously there's a better moment for well, yeah, it, because it a kiss to be something very impactful <laughs> to lead to it. Like, yeah, because a kiss is not the validation of a no, relationship. There's many needs, ways to do it. But their reunion, it needs to be something, like, huge. But... If that, like I said, if that's not the kiss, it needs to be bigger than the reunion in eight. But then the moment Head they pa- do kiss has to be even <laughs> bigger than that. So yeah, I mean, like you got to think it's going to have to be even greater. Because like that. I said, e- even though I said putting the heads together was way more impactful than a kiss, head pu- putting heads together is only going to get us so far. Yeah, uh, we need to go somewhere else. Like it needs to top that, and if that's well, not I mean, the kiss, it has to go up above that. So I mean, and I'm sure Kruby knows they kind of need to to finally push the button on it because we've got shows like Arcane and um, the Owl House and just all that that's really going places and. There's also going to be a Legend of Korra movie, and I'm hoping it takes place after Volume 4, because I want to see a Korasami kiss animated, um, or whatever it's going to be. I think they're going to be animated, I hope so. I, don't, I really don't want another live-action uh, Avatar movie ever again. But, um, now, like I said, if... It's just, It's hard to say that I'll be upset if they don't, because we just don't know... Maybe the story they're telling with Blake and Yang is still not over by like as far as building that, but we've got to find a hurdle somewhere to get over and then continue and like show how they're going to work as an actual couple. I yeah, mean, like the reunion has to be impactful. Like that's just the bottom line there. Like, and I love Renora, and I love Renora. Do not get me wrong, but the kiss needs to blow that kiss out of the water because this is something that it's, yes, because like it's been like two, they're at two different stages in their relationships though. So like, well, I'm just talking like 
what the fandom's been waiting for. Like, yes, well, yes. We, we were waiting for the Renora kiss forever. But, Which, how they did it, though, was great. <laughs> yes, but I think, I just, I don't know, I just think people are like, <laughs> they're ready for Blake and Yang to finally yeah. kiss. Like, it's gotten to the point where at Ruby shoots, when we do Bumblebee pictures, people yell, just kiss already. <laughs> um but who knows? Like I said, if, if they don't kiss right away, I'm not going to be screaming, oh, it's never going to happen. Because, um, I, like I said, I didn't think the Blake and Yang versus Adam fight was going to happen in Volume 6, and it happened. Um, then, of course, you know, Yang reacting to Blake's hair. I didn't really think we'd get that. We got it. Um, the little thing with uh, Marrow in the caves. Yeah, there's that. <laughs> Um, th- then of course there was their reunion in volume eight. Like if you watch that reaction, my face literally turns red like a tomato and she almost cried. Well, kind of does. My cry. eyes did water. So yes. Um, so yeah. So I think as of right now, the biggest theory, the biggest possible theory is that it's going to happen when they reunite. Um, does Kruby like just, <laughs> just drag it on? through till half of the season. I don't know. Um, we're, and they're, they're miss like it'll air after Christmas. So it's not like we have to worry about a Christmas break, but I'm sure they will take a break at some point during the season. But, um, I don't know. Hopefully we get some teases from maybe Aaron or Barbara before January. Um, the closer it gets, the more we're going to, the possibility of seeing some type of teaser of yeah. something. Yeah, because both like... of them, I think both of them at this point have said this is their favorite volume. So, um, I don't know. Uh, but many others have said that as well. So, yeah, that's all we've really got. Um, I wish we could come up with some crazy theories right now, but I just, with the situation the characters are in right now, I just don't it's think It's hard there's... to really predict anything. Well, yeah, and this doesn't seem like there'd be that many other kind of... Moments. Also, they did say that this this volume would have more character interactions. They said that a long time ago. So maybe we'll finally get some moments where it's just characters talking to each other. Because um, we, I, I know a lot of people did not like that in Volume Five, like Ruby and them just sitting in the house for so long. But I think we're at a point to where the kind of situation they're in that they they at least need to have an episode where we're just sitting around and we're discussing things. Also, that could be like, you know, trying to develop a plan to get out of there, blah, blah, blah. I still think Little is going to be like a guide or something. But um, that's all we got. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, click that like button, leave a comment. If you've got any other theories out there that you think might li- might be what they go for, I know we really didn't talk about what Blake and Yang could do in Volume 9 after the kiss. Um, who knows? Um, I do think we're going to get a lot of single character stuff because of the whole, you know, questioning um, um, identities and all that. So who knows? We may get that before they reunite or it may be after. I don't know. It's just really hard to say because we don't know a whole lot. But um, yeah, I do think they will kiss. And I think I don't think they're going to be hanging all over each other and stuff like that. They're not going to kiss every five minutes or something <laughs> like that. But um. It's going to be an interesting volume, I think. Like, Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. You never know with Ruby. But, um, yeah, say it once again. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, click that like button, leave us a comment. As always, guys, this is Kanan. This is Jesse. We love you all very, very much. Stay safe out there. Take care of yourselves, and we will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.